Hey guy, Rick Shaw again, and uh, I got a response on. It was on the messenger again. You know, I didn't. I didn't uh, produce the last video. I'm gonna put that up maybe later today. But uh, there, two people had questions on what happened during my motorcycle accident. And why I said these are Filipino people I know from, for many years, and they said, "Oh, we didn't know you only got like about 25 percent of what you asked for." And what happened? So I, okay, I'm gonna put it on here. I'll tell you what happened. With this accident in mine. Uh, it was one of the, it was a quick accident. I didn't even, didn't even have time to hit the brake, and then I was airborne. Okay, bike did the flippity floppity. Glad it didn't land on top of me, but I hit the biggest jerk in the Philippines. Uh, we went through the police inquiry. We won that. We went through the barangay. We won that. We went through up in Imus to their court up there. We won that. We went to the court down here and won. But like I say, I didn't think I got a fair shake because I didn't get what everything I asked for. And uh, one of the things I asked for was my helmet. Right before I moved here, I'm going to move here, uh, so I'm going to buy a helmet. Well, at the time I was looking for a helmet, I always liked to look for the year old ones or something like that. They couldn't get my size. I, I wear the showy. I've had Bell, HJC, Arai. I've had all these different helmets, and they just don't fit. They, they hit me in the head right here, and I get a headache after, you know, half hour riding. Well, the showies fit me good. I can put them on and wear them for an eight-hour iron butt, and they don't bother me, so... I'm looking for one. I can't find a last year's in the 63 centimeter or whatever they call it, 64 centimeter for the size. It's a 2X. All they had was a new one and the cheapest price I could find uh, that I could get because I, I uh, came here and then I, was, I went back for a month to tidy things up and I had a month to get a helmet so and get it shipped. Cheapest I could find was $4.99 for the showy. But it's the showy, fancy, schmancy, best one. So when I got in the accident, Okay, go get mommy. Mommy will do it for you. Okay, buddy. He did his. He was doing pooping on the body today. Big boy now. Okay, so back to the, back to the thing. So I had to get the expensive showy. And when I was in the accident, the first thing that hit the ground was the helmet right here. And it, it scraped. It scraped right through. I mean, it did. With my weight at the time, I weighed about 290, and uh, it scraped through the helmet. Then my head. It was a full face showy, and my head went like this. Broke my collarbone. So my collarbone was broke. And I used to always say in, in the States when people would get whiplash, you know, I didn't buy it. it. I thought it was a thing to get extra money out of an accident. But I had whiplash. I had, uh, I had a couple weeks uh, that I could not, I couldn't even turn around to clean my butt. I mean, I, I was just locked up. So I didn't get paid for the helmet. It, nothing. I didn't get paid for my shirt. Nothing. I got scraped up. I was all scraped up and bloody. Uh, my pants. I can't buy pants here. Somebody tell me where I can get pants with a, at that time it was a 42 waist and a 36 inch inseam. Ain't buying them here. <laughs> you just ain't getting them. Now I'm down, I'm down to a 40 inch, 40 inch waist. I lost a little bit of weight, but, but uh, can't find them. So real nice pair of pants because they're, they're work pants. And I used to wear my tongs home, but one of my buddies, Ronald, owned that. Hey buddy. Uh, you know, at the time, he was saying you're going through San Pedro, they give you a ticket for your toes not being covered. So I was wearing my real nice uh, Nike tennis shoes that, uh, that I, my buddy sent me. Scraped the, scraped the top off. Didn't get a dime for them. Didn't get the shoes, the pants, anything. I got nothing for five weeks of missing work. I had to split the difference. You know, Judge said, well, what are you going to work for, for, for this? And she's asking me this question. Hey! <laughs> You fly off the front of a motorcycle, land on your head, break your collarbone, and do a tumble thing on uneven asphalt. And then you tell me when you can go back to work. That lady, we had, she was off work for a good while, too, for a couple weeks. We couldn't go to the court. I don't know what happened to her, but she was off. Okay, well, I was, this is how long I was off. Okay, I just split the difference, took half. Didn't get nothing for my time off of work. Got the hospital bill. So this is why I only got about 25%. So... I just, I just felt like, you know, I got wrong. The guy was uh, uh, just a jerk. Uh, he had a, a buddy down when the first police thing came before the investigators coming. No, no, buddy. Take to mommy, please. And uh, you know, his buddy was trying to get me to say it's my fault. And all confessed to it. And confessed to what? Got an accident. It's his fault. And uh, we went through there. The police did an investigation. They came up said it was his. Well, during this time, I... I wanted to get a, to find out how much it was going to be to fix my motorcycle. 
Well, it was an impound, same as his vehicle. Can't get it out. The only way I could take it down there was to have the police come with me. I'm serious. The cop had to come with me. And then when I went into the dealer where I bought it, I didn't tell him, hey, you know, I'm here, here's a thousand pesos. Just say all this is broke. No. Cop was right there. Looked it up, and they gave, they gave their written estimate. I didn't get nothing. He brought in some rummy dummy buddy of his to the police station that came after dark with a little pen light looking at it. He only looked at the front end and said 12000 So they basically split the difference between the 68, which wasn't even the total value. That's just what the, the dealer guy said. It was even less than the, the difference between them and and the 12000 So I, I felt like I got screwed on that, you know, because I, I couldn't replace the bike at the time. You know, I was driving the tricycle after that. So, you know, that's where that was. And then another thing, his bike, uh, somebody at the accident site said, it's not registered. It's, it's, it's not. So, and it wasn't. You know, they were looking at him. My wife came and neighbors came. No, it's not registered. And then he took off. You know, he took off from the accident. And um, he come back, I guess, with his license. So, and his buddy, you know, his buddy, the cop was there. So he, he'd get carte blanche to do whatever he wanted. Uh, now, but his bike was in an impound. It got registered three days after the accident. I was going by there every day, and all my friends go there. It's right, it was, the impound lot was right by the house. Well, how do you get it up to register? There's smoke belching. I, anybody here in the Philippines can tell me how you can get your bike registered without taking it down to the LTO. You let me know. And it did not leave impound. You got to sign them in and out. Well, he got to register somehow. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he. he guy was just, a, like I say, a jerk. He would come get in my face and uh, call me bad names. Nah, I don't. Okay, fine. You want to call me bad names? Big deal. Sticks and stones may break my bones, you know. And if you keep it up, I'll break yours. <laughs> so, what happened with this uh, dummy? He, one day he came, and I'm just ignoring him. You know, we're going to go through the Baron guy in the court and all this. And he started hollering at my wife. Well, I was getting ready to go out the gate and get, I, I was going to stomp this punk. I don't care if I got to, you know, kicked out of the country or not, I was going to stomp this punk, and he knew it, and he boogied. I had, never saw him again after that, uh, except in, in the court things and stuff, and he, and he would take off. Uh, when we finally got to the last court, he brought in, he said, I got witnesses. He brought in these witnesses. One of them just refused to testify. He said, no, I, I, I don't want to lie here. So he tried to get a, a guy, and this is another one of the reasons I feel bad. Then the other one who said he, you know, he witnessed the accident and that it's all my fault. Well, he, he got on court, and they started asking him questions, the lawyer, and twisted him a circle. He finally said, well, well you know, it was, uh, uh, it's, he's my friend, and I, I wasn't even there. I was just trying to help him. Wait a minute now. That's why I felt wronged. Why wasn't this man, for bringing in false witnesses against me, held in contempt of court? Now they let him go. When I'd see him, he was all pissed off and mad and calling me names, as long as it was on the other side of a fence, mind you. But in court, oh, he was the saddest sack. He should have been in, gone to Hollywood. Of course, he had to have been in The Hills Have Eyes, but he could have been a great movie actor. He was playing the saddest sack and like an old feeble guy, you know, just terrible. So that's where it was with this and why I said, uh, you know, I felt I got a bad shake. But in, in the video, I said, you know, yeah, you ain't going to get a good, you know, fair shake. It's just me. It's just me. And I did the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So that, that's where that's at. I hope you guys watch them all so you can see how this developed, but this was a, a couple things from my friends that I'm answering, so, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to see me today, we're just, I'm making the videos because I got time, uh, we're going to go buy some eggs today, we're not really doing anything, I washed clothes in my wonderful new quiet machine, it's running right now, it's running right now, you can't hear it, it's really quiet, and uh, I did all the bed clothes, they're hanging up there, we, ha we hang them, I don't have a dryer yet, but uh, now we're washing rugs and stuff, and this machine does a great job. It's the, this is the machine. I hope you can see it on here. This is the, this is the machine, guys. That's a really nice one. It's a Japanese technology, but it says it's made in Thailand. But uh, like I say, it's really solid uh, quality. It's a, it's a nice machine. So you know, there's one if you want to buy a nice, quiet machine if you're in a condo or something. <laughs> this is a perfect one for a small apartment or a condo. You can put it next to the kitchen or in the bathrooms. You can't even. You can't hear it. It's that quiet. So get that one. And, uh, but that's just that's my spiel on there. Some people brought up some questions, and, and I'm sure they'll see the other video. I think they send it on to the the Yahoo where they put it in the comments and stuff. But a lot of my friends they use the messenger, and uh, I do too. I mean that's 
It always it always works. Even here, when I don't get signal, the messenger works. So that's why I like that, and and it's free on Smart. If you uh, if your load runs out, you still got the messenger. It'll, it'll still work as long as you got signal. You still use it, and I know I think it's Facebook too. I think it's got to be like Facebook Lite or something. But the Facebook will even work when we run out of load. And uh, I buy load here just for example, how much it cost. I buy the it was Giga Surf ninety nine. Now it's Giga Surf. Uh, or Giga Video, I think they call it now. I get it from a little boy's store up there. Uh, it's Giga 99. It cost me 101 pesos for a week. We get a whole week of data, one gigabyte a day. Uh, if you watch it a whole lot, you could run it out. You know, so you, you could run your video out. But that's uh, just something to think of, you guys. I wanted to, I wanted to answer back to you guys and let you know what's going on. Uh, it's hard to talk uh, long on the on the text. You know, on the messenger, because my my voice one where I would speak into it with this new phone, I, I don't know what happened to it. I tried to load, it won't work. It doesn't show up the little thing where I can do that anymore. Now I got to punch in the, you know, I got predictive text, but I got to punch in the button, so we don't get to chat as much as we do. But but I do got that Facebook thing that says when I'm in a certain area, if I'm ever over your guys' way again, and you see that, you know, like if we're in a mall or something, hope hope to see a bunch of my old friends from from over Dallas Marina's ways. And, uh, and then let y'all go. Rickshaw out.